restraint. I can't do it. Gerard looked flummoxed by the refusal, his mouth open slightly. It's not really a request, Lutemeisler. This is an instruction from the Senate. Someone has to appraise this. I was hoping you might. He trailed off, not quite sure what he was hoping. The Varushkin smiled at her boss, trying not to enjoy the awkwardness of the encounter. It's not really a refusal, Gerard, they said. I'm not saying I won't do it. I'm saying I can't do it, because it's not possible. I'm very sorry, but you'll have to tell Senate what they've asked for is not possible. From time to time, they're bound to ask for something that is... unwise. Gerard furrowed his brows and rubbed the bridge of his nose with his hand. He briefly imagined telling a room full of the most powerful people in the Empire that a semi-retired Varushkin Kabbalist had refused their instruction because they felt it was unwise. Perhaps you could provide me with a more technical explanation of why you feel this task is too difficult for you, he said. He regretted the snide tone as soon as the words had left his mouth. It wasn't like him at all, but Luto Meisler had this way of getting under his skin. It was all well and good hiring former archmages, but all too often they acted as if they'd seen it all before. Luto Meisler just grinned at Gerard. You already know why this won't work, but sure, I'll spell it out for you. An appraisal is all about finding a way to do something. You have something you want to happen, we work out what would be needed to achieve that. But this... This is asking us to find a way to make something not happen. And not a specific thing either. There are an infinite number of ways our many enemies might raid us. Each raid would be different. Each raid would be unique. Each one would require a different way to stop it. Gerard sighed heavily. It's like they're asking us to stop the rain from falling, he agreed. Ha! <laughs> Lutemeisler laughed. That would be much easier. We just have a plenipotentiary with the cupbearer or the hungry walled and work something out. She trailed off slightly. The pained expression on Gerard's face had taken all the enjoyment out of making fun of him. Why don't you ask Graciana? She said in a more conciliatory tone. Gerard brightened at the suggestion. You think she'd be able to manage this? No, Luther Meisler said, shaking her head. But she's unwise enough to give it a try. Gerard rolled his eyes at the aging Kabbalist. Thanks, you've been a great help, he said sarcastically. Overview. At the summer solstice, the Imperial Senate requested an appraisal on how the Empire can best defend itself against raids, preferably without the construction of fortifications or the commitment of armies. The motion didn't specify which of the four senior researchers were requested, so the decision was left to Gerard LaSalle, the Imperial Auditor. After some discussion with the team, they chose to appoint the freeborn night mage Graciana E. Lopez Irigüera to the task. The appraisal represents a significant technical challenge. Graciana points out there's no single way to stop raiding. As soon as you stop the enemy from entering through the door by barricading it, they'll enter through the window. The Empire simply cannot prevent every barbarian from venturing across every border, nor discourage every lazy thug interested in taking things that do not belong to them. Not while the Empire has something worth stealing. What they can do, what they do currently, is track incursions and look for opportunities to use the Sentinel Gate to move to intercept those raids. Of course, that doesn't always work, but that is the nature of armed conflict. If the prognosticators could appraise a way by which the Empire could win every battle, they would have done that centuries ago. As such, it is not possible to appraise a way to stop all raids but Graciana is able to provide some suggestions for ways that might help in some cases. Fund mercenaries. The Senate could hire mercenaries to patrol the Empire's borders. This would require a Senate motion and would cost the Senate 10 thrones per territory each season. The motion would only prevent a raid that explicitly aimed to damage the production of every personal resource in a territory. There are currently 15 territories that are under threat from raiding. Graciana has talked with citizens who have suffered from the Jotun's recent raids into the Western Empire, as well as those who have endured the depredations of the Druze over the years. The single best way the Empire can defend itself from raids would be to encourage Imperial citizens to do the work themselves. That way, the people that would benefit most could support the effort. It would still cost money, but done in this way, it might cost far less than it would otherwise be imagined. Funding these mercenaries will be sufficient to prevent raids that would harm the holdings of individual citizens. This would be enough to ensure that such holdings were protected from sweeping raids. 
To carry out an attack like that, the barbarians tend to fan out across the territory looking for any weakness. Patrols of Schlachter, Thorns, Knights and others will be more than capable of dealing with small bands of barbarians who venture across the border, in an attempt to steal herds of cattle, troves of mana crystals, or loot patches of herbs. What mercenaries wouldn't be able to stop are the war bands of barbarians who are focused on pillaging civilian commissions, nor prevent them from conducting an organized raid targeting a specific, named personal resource, such as Jonah's Lament in the Morn. The protection of these structures would still fall firmly under the purview of their custodian, and most likely require intervention through the Sentinel Gate. This solution would not be sufficient to prevent the actions of armies. Ultimately, ensuring that the Jotun don't send an armed force of several hundred Jotun raiders to attack a specific target like the Sinking Caves requires an intervention of the Imperial Military Council through the disposition of the Empire's armies, or the heroes of Anvil travelling via the Sentinel Gate. Bind the hands. It is possible to use magic to protect the personal resources in a territory from raiding. An unknown enchantment has been laid over Imperial territories a number of times in the past three years. It is unknown if this is being performed using an arcane projection or if someone has access to a ritual text. The Raven's Plight in Wintermark are willing to support funding it being codified, with the provision that it be added to Imperial law. Rather than the Imperial Senate funding mercenaries and guards to protect every territory at risk, the Imperial Conclave could attempt a similar solution using magic instead. The magic uses the subtle resonances of the realm to misdirect raiders. It has no noticeable impact on invading forces, but will prevent a plundering army having an effect on personal resources in the territory. Graciana doesn't know who has been casting the ritual, nor how, since there is no ritual in Imperial law but presumably someone at Anvil knows how to do it. Either they have their own ritual or ritual text, or else they are creating arcane projections to achieve the effect. The latter option would be expensive, but whatever technique is being employed, it definitely works. Of course, if it is a ritual, then it will require mana, and presumably a coven to cast it, and it would need to be cast on each territory that the Empire wanted to protect. But it might be cheaper than paying for soldiers to protect every border and be more flexible. If the Imperial Conclave could identify the magicians behind the enchantments, they might be able to negotiate for the ritual to be put in Imperial law. Of course, if there is no ritual text, that would mean codifying a ritual at one of the Empire's Colleges of Magic, which would have to be arranged and could be expensive depending on the magnitude of the ritual. Graciana believes that it is unlikely to be cheap. To help facilitate the endeavour, a Steiner Coven and Handmark called the Raven's Plight has offered a reward for whoever created this unique enchantment, if they were to share it with the Empire. Provided the ritual ends up in Imperial law, they will present the Conclave with the Gulner's Eye, a rare artifactual stone that was found in the deep centuries ago. The Eye is a talisman that boosts a ritual magician's autumn law by one rank twice a day. The Plight have placed the Eye in the care with the Prefect of the Conclave, to be bequeathed to whichever magician the Orders identify is responsible for creating the original ritual. The Black Feast The Conclave has agreed that Tharim can feast on the mana sites and herb gardens of the Brass Coast. A number of freeborn families have complained that this amounts to being raided by the Bound King. It is not only barbarians that can raid the holdings of Imperial citizens. Whilst the threat posed by the Heralds of Agrament, Siaka, and Scaith are obvious, it is the actions of the Bound King that are worrying some families in the Brass Coast. Over the last season, their patches of true vervain have wilted, and a number have reported that the mana crystals that they've managed to harvest have been wan in colour, appearing to have been drained of their magic. These families understand that the Conclave has signed a contract with the Bound King, that the enthroned monarch has been given license to steal the prosperity of freeborn holdings, in return for providing his knights to fight the Jotun. However, they point out that this could be illegal for the Imperial Senate to make such arrangements. If these arrangements were considered to be tax, then they would clearly be unconstitutional. Ultimately, what is the difference between the Jotun raiding their herb gardens and the Tharim doing it? It amounts to the same thing in their view. The freeborn aren't stupid. They are aware that the family magicians in Hakama who visit Anvil and take part in Conclave must have had their reasons to stop the declaration, and that Izara Iriqueza, who raised the Concord using the Golden Pyramid's declaration, must have had their own reasons for doing so. Moreover, they do not intend to challenge the arrangements now, 
Clearly the coast and the empire have some kind of contract with the shackled crown, and contracts must be kept. When the people of the coast give their word, they keep it. But the brass coast isn't Navarro Highgard. The people of their nations don't expect to sacrifice their hard-earned prosperity in order to support an army that is already paid for by their taxes. They suspect that it's not actually possible for the Imperial Senate to make it illegal for the Conclave to pay for its deals with other people's wealth. However, they give fair warning. There must be no more arrangements of this kind with the Tharim, or indeed any other Eternal in the future. At least not that affect the Brass Coast, and they have a simple ultimatum for if that doesn't happen. If there are any other deals with the Tharim involving the resources of the Brass Coast after, then they will respond in kind, withholding their taxes from the Imperial Treasury. The Brass Coast Assembly could use a mandate to inform these aggrieved families that the current deal that the Conclave has made does not reflect a legitimate contract signed on behalf of the Brass Coast. Despise the thieving bandit. Tharim has no right to the manor and herbs of the Brass Coast. We send named priests with 50 doses of Liao to encourage citizens to refuse to pay their taxes until these raids are dealt with. Synod Mandate, Brass Coast National Assembly. If this mandate were enacted, then the taxation from Karaman, Madruga, and Segura will drop by roughly one-tenth. If this continues and isn't stopped at the winter solstice, 385 YE, then it will rise to one-fifth increasing to two-fifths if it is not resolved by the Spring Equinox 386YE. Design Notes We have done our best with this appraisal to present methods that the players can use to deal with some of the raids that have happened in the past in the Empire, or which are happening currently. In general, however, it is not possible to use an appraisal to stop other kinds of raids. We create raids as part of the plot of the game. They represent opportunities undertaken by the Empire's enemies, just as the Empire has opportunities against the Barbarians, and they are an important part of the military side of the Empire. Some armies are able to undertake raids as part of a special action they can take. The Empire can't stop the Barbarians attempting that, any more than the Barbarians can stop the Empire's armies from doing the same. More generally, Raids against key locations in the Empire are a key tool that helps keep battles and skirmishes relevant to the ongoing campaign. They are a part of the dramatic storyline of the game. They are part of the plot of Empire. You can't use an appraisal to take away one or more of the tools we use to create plot.